Supernatural Season 12 premiere, Keep Calm and Carry On. This was actually a pretty nice, um, it was sort of a subtle opening, i say. We got some pretty interesting information. We got to see <clears throat> what I think, despite all the interrogation scenes that we've had before, I think this is actually the most gruesome one that we've ever had, simply for the uh, blowtorch scene, which I was, I, I assume, um, Cass is going to be able to, you know, fix that right up once they actually get to Sam. But I thought that was interesting. I also didn't think she was going to, like, burn across his foot. I thought she was going to just, like, sear his toes off, which would have been really intense. And that may have come off as ideas and be like, yeah, we can't go that far <laughs> on television. So that might be why they had her kind of do the burn marks across his foot. But I thought this was a good episode. You know, it starts off right where the last season ended, which... I honestly thought they'd do a bit of a time skip. I thought if there was ever a finale that kind of could have used a premiere that had a, a bit of a time skip, I would, you know, I, I thought it might be this one, but they pick up right where it left off, and Dean's talking with Mary, and he's explaining everything that happened, and it's like, yeah, this happened, and that happened, and, you know, spirits, and darkness, and dad died this way, and this happened, and that happened, and angels, and you know, all this other new stuff, and her um and the way they did it is that she didn't even know who dean was it was basically they plucked her straight from the moment she died to right now which i thought was a, a, a very interesting way to do that because they've had she's been in the show quite a few times so it was interesting to see that she showed up because i thought she would know who he was because of some, you know, some of the stuff we've seen so it was pretty interesting where you know the very first scene she's like Basically, in, in her mind, it was like she was just teleported pretty much to this random location. So, I like the way they did that. Where she's coming into it and, you know, they go through the episode and she's dealing with, you know, the world in itself. You know, skipping 30 years of technology and, you know, cell phones and music and television. All, all these different things and stuff. So, I like that idea. And I'm curious to see how they're actually going to do... Mary's character as she kind of gets, you know, more and more used to the, you know, the current world. And I think Cass might actually be a cool way to do that. I think that would be an interesting way to have them actually talk with each other. Because they have the little scene when they're at, like, the pie place. Um, and it was like, okay, you know, he, he mentions, like, I, I still remember my first time when I was on Earth and it's a bit jarring. So I was like, alright, that could be something that they do where she's trying to kind of get used to Earth and Cass is the one that be like, hey... I still don't understand things 100%, but, you know, this is this, and he kind of, he gives her, like, the most basic form, and then she's able to kind of go from there, and be like, okay, I like this, or I don't like this, you know, new technology or whatever, so I thought that would be a cool way to do it if they decide to go that route, but it's a really easy way to just have the two of them talk with each other, but I really, I, I am happy to see what they do with this. I can't wait to see what happens, you know, when Sam finally realizes his mother is alive. And Dean, he thinks, you know, he doesn't even know that Dean's still alive. So there's a lot there for him to realize, you know, once they eventually end up finding him. But I love what they did with Mary's character in this episode. We got to see her as a hunter, as a mother, and as a mother who didn't want the life that she know she now knows her children have. Like that ending scene I really love because she killed someone and it was like, man, this is the life that I've been running away from, you know, my entire life. And I I actually got away from it. I got away from it with your father and then I come back thirty years later and it turns out that both my children are in this, my husband died you know, because of it. And it's just you know, a devastating situation for her to be in. And I, I thought that was a really good scene where she's just like, this just isn't what I thought was going to be, you know, the life for my children. So I really like that scene. And I don't know how, you know, how they're going to do it with her character, but I'm excited to see where they take it. I think she'll just become, you know, more capable as things continue on because she was, you know, already a hunter. So she'll kind of, I think she'll, be reluctant to do it but i think she will get back into it at least after they save sam i think she'll kind of be you know less likely to kind of just go out on a mission or anything like that so i'm excited to see where they take her character how far she decides to go with hunting um if she decides to continue to do it because it's like well now that i'm back i'm gonna save my boys even if you know they've been doing it for a long time 
I'm still going to do it to make sure that, you know, they stay alive as long as they possibly can. Or if she'll get out of it, like once they find Sam, she'll maybe stay, you know, stay at the bunker and be like, you know what, I won't go out to do the missions. I trust you two to do it, but I'll do the research and stuff like that. So I'm excited to see where they take it. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. I would assume that she, you know, go out hunting and we have like a quartet because we have Sam, Dean, Kaz, and Mary. But who knows? We'll have to see how it all plays out. But I really did enjoy getting to see her character. Um, I love the scene where she's looking at the car and it starts off nice and you know um it was a great and, it, and that was a great scene just for the opening of the season because it's like it's a new season we've been away from the show for a while so they have like just this really great moment where they you know they're just panning through the car and stuff and we just see the seats and the tires and, and and the steering wheel and everything it's like this is a really cool scene and it's even though it, it's meant you know as far as the episode goes it's meant for mary to see the car you know 30 years later and she realizes they still have this car and it still looks amazing but even for viewers it was like this is a cool shot because it's just been a long time since we've seen you know the show it's been months so it's like this is a cool shot for the first episode of this season it's like just to have a focus on the car and because it's it is one of the characters of the show and i was like that's this is actually a really cool scene just even for me watching it and then it got really silly because it's like you know, it's like, and, and it made sense at first. It was like, okay, you know, it's panning from the front to the back of the car. And then it kind of stops in the middle of the car. And I didn't get for like a split second, for a, quite a while, I didn't realize it until Dean actually said something. Because I'm just like, why did it pause here? Like, this is weird. Like, it, you know, it's panning through the whole thing. It's this amazing moment. And then it just stopped. I'm like, why did, why did, why did it stop at the back seat? And then he realized it. And as soon as he said, oh, I was like, Oh, it stopped at the backseat, and then it got really funny and you know, awkward for Dean. So I love both sides of that scene because it was really good. But you know, going through the episode, we have them kind of going on this adventure. We have Sam kind of going on an adventure. We, you know, of course, we find out that he wasn't killed, which I think we all knew. But we find out he was shot in the leg, so he's taken by whatever that woman's name is. I want to say her name is Samantha Bevel, which might actually be right but I'm, I'm pretty sure last name at least is bubble so they take him to a vet and then which i thought was a little weird i mean it's the the men of letters you think they'd have connections even if you know they're in the states you'd think they'd have some kind of deep connections even in the states at least a couple of people where it's like hey in this area yeah at least considering they've been watching them for such a long time they'd have someone around there is like all right i'll dig this bullet out no big deal and then excuse me, and then take them, you know, to a different safe house or whatever, but it's like, nope, you're a vet, we're just gonna throw $100,000 at you, so I need you to kind of dig this bullet out of this guy, and he does, and so they take him, and they torture him, and we find out why Sam is being tortured kind of halfway through, where they actually give a really awesome little sequence of the men of letters, uh, the British, or chap she was very specific about something, because I think he said English, and she specifically said British, so, I, I I guess, you know, she has a, there's a specific thing there. I don't know why that was such a big deal, but I'm also not British or English, you know, I, so it doesn't have an effect on me. But they had a really cool scene where she was talking about the, you know, the, the men of letters and how they basically marked every dock, every pier, every, everything has a sigil on it somewhere. And it's warded so that as soon as something comes in, it's like, boom, they're taken out within 20 minutes. And within 40 minutes, they're killed. You know, it was just a group of people. It was just like clockwork. It was like, okay, here's this thing. We gotcha. Chopped its head off. Had the little train right in the middle of the room where most of the blood went. And that was it. It was like, okay, that was incredibly efficient. And she says, like, they haven't had um, a supernatural-based incident since like 1965 or something really crazy and that's like all of britain and that's nuts so it was really something like it, it kind of shows how the men of letters you know on the other side of the world basically is still a full functioning thing like it was in you know kind of in the flashbacks that we got in previous seasons and that kind of deteriorated down to basically sam and dean but the other chapter is still just like going full force and they take out everything as it comes into the country there's basically no supernatural element like people don't even experience that world because that's how efficient they are and i thought that was actually amazing they're like you know you guys 
basically find a case and then you save a couple people. Maybe you kill the monster, but that first person is still dead. Like, that new story still exists because that person died. Maybe a couple other people, which, as we know, is always the case. That's literally the whole series. Someone died, they go in, someone else dies, they try to figure it out, probably a third person dies, and then they save the fourth, fifth, and sixth person because... It always, they always kind of balance it out to be like, yeah, we still saved a bunch of people, but it's like, there's still quite a few people that died. So, she had a great point, and I thought it was great. I, I love that scene where they just show how efficient it was and how, really, all they're trying to do, in, in the stupidest way possible, is gather hunters together so that they can expand the network to the states and actually save both sides of the world as easy as they save, you know, the British side. So, I thought that was really cool. Uh, like I said, though, they did do it in, like, the stupidest way possible by threatening him and even pulling the gun. Like, her first move was to get rid of Cass. Instantly, when someone does that, it's like, okay, this kind of seems like a bad situation. And when they're sitting and stuff, she's like, you know, I'd say it wasn't meant to go this way, but it's you. It was always meant to go this way. And it's kind of like, well, when your first move is, whoa, get out of here, and, you know, you get rid of the angel that kind of sends a, sends a pretty clear message. Like, you know, if they've been watching them for so long, they should know who Cass is at this point. But, I don't know, maybe at the same time, they really don't want to involve angels and demons and stuff. And, and that kind of makes sense, but it's like, it's Cass. So, you know, she said that, but I'm like, no, oh, it was kind of, it was her. She made some very specific moves. She could have just been like, hey, I'm from the Men of Letters. Normal conversation, but she went in sigils ready, so different message. She made a different message, and then torturing him instead of anything normal, I guess. I, I don't know, but it is the way that it is now, and so, of course, Sam is kind of messed up. He's in this crazy situation, and they hit him with... I, I'm very curious to see if we're going to get this random... I, I don't even know what to call it. It's basically the remorse drug where it's like oh look at all these horrible moments from your life and they you know they show jessica and they show all these moments that are just the worst you know for sam so i don't know if we'll see that again but i kind of hope we do I, I thought that was very interesting or something you know they always find something interesting to introduce into the show and i like that it's a simple little interrogation thing where it's just meant to drive you crazy but of course sam is stronger than that and he does the fake suicide thing and he almost gets out. I thought he was actually going to make it. And, you know, he'd just be out somewhere random. But it turns out she wasn't as passed out as he thought she was. And so they have the little fight. And he actually loses, which made sense. Because, you know, with him having the messed up foot, that's really the only reason that happened. Because he would have just ran right up the stairs. But, you know, he could barely walk. So, yet another episode. He's going to be trapped down there. Um... I'm curious if this will go beyond the second episode where they don't find him for a couple, but I'm curious where it's going. You know, all she wants, she says all she wants is answers, but he, she kind of did in the worst way, so he's, he's, he's made his piece with how it's going to play out. So now she has to figure out what she's going to do, especially now that she's on her own. And they mention, um, I forgot what they called the doctor's name, but apparently he's like the interrogation guy. So I feel like we might see him in the next episode because she won't be able to get anywhere and she won't even have her partner to do the actual, you know, kind of dirty work. So we might end up seeing the psychopath, as she called him, in this next episode. And then we also have Crowley who's going around. Um, they, they have him say hello boys as his first line, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but he's going around hopping through all these different locations because he's trying to track down Lucifer who's jumping from body to body because, of course, it's Lucifer, so he needs a, a worthy vessel. And I thought that was pretty cool. So we still, you know, we still have Crowley. I didn't think he'd even show up in this first episode, honestly. I thought it would just be their mother is back, and they gotta find Sam. That easily could have been the whole episode, but I was glad when they kind of cut to the other demons, which is a really funny scene when the one demon was talking about possessing the teenage girl. But we got to see Crowley on his little journey. He takes out the two guys who were kind of bad-mouthing him before. Uh, one of which I recognize, uh, the skinnier dude. I was like, oh, he's, you know, he's in the season. I thought that meant maybe he'll be a featured extra in a couple episodes. I was like, oh, no, he had his time to shine last season, so he's gone now. 
But we got Crowley. He's searching for Lucifer. We're going to see Lucifer who, um, if you saw the promo, and you may have known this even before the season started, um, we have a new actor who's going to be playing uh, the devil. I totally forgot his name. I want to say it's Rick Springsteen, but that might be a different musician. But we got, you know, a, a totally different guy playing the devil, and I don't mind it. You know, I, maybe it's because I'm not, like, I wasn't shocked when I saw the promo. I knew that was happening because some stuff I saw over the summer. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. And they said he was a special guest for the next episode. And the devil, you know, he's, I guess the devil kind of had his moment where he was in every episode for the season. Because he had a couple of seasons, pretty much. So we probably won't see him a ton. But obviously Crowley's storyline kind of starts off as, you know, he wants to take out Lucifer so he can get his placement back. So... He'll show up every once in a while, and I'm fine with that. You know, I don't mind it being a new actor. I would love it if it was still Mark Pellegrino, because I like him as the devil. But we'll see how it plays out. I'm excited to see how they, you know, do it with this different actor, and how the style changes, if they change the style. Um, and it'll be weird if they do, but it's, I, I don't know, it, it's hard to say, because, you know, we had it, you know, even last season, when it was Misha Collins doing it, where he was possessed, you know, he was possessed Cass, he still did it where he was making the same sort of jokes and doing the mannerisms. So, it'll be weird if we don't have that, but at the same time, it's like knowing that this guy is taking over as the new devil, it may or may not be permanent, but knowing that that's basically the case, that I, I would assume that it's permanent, um, it'll be interesting to see how they do it, because it's not the same actor, so they might change the mannerisms up a little, but it's the same character, so technically that doesn't fit. But we'll, we'll just have to see how it all plays out. Um, I am still excited for it. It's the devil, so even though it's not the same actor, I'm still excited to see you know what they do with the devil in this. Especially considering, at this point, he's he doesn't have like the big evil plan. He's kind of just there. Even the last season when he got out, he ended up having a plan where it's like, oh, I'm I'm free now, and so is, you know you got the darkness. So that was his plan. But now it's like. We kind of just have the devil. The darkness is gone. I mean, he might just try to take over the world again, I guess. But at this point, there's really no like clear direction as to what he's going to do or what he's not going to do. So it's like, who knows? Like It, it could just get nuts, which it most likely will because it's Lucifer. But I'm excited for this season. I thought this was a good first episode. Really excited to see what they do with Mary's character, what they do with the Men of Letters, which... Um, I hadn't known this, but I didn't I didn't realize the symbol was actually the middle letter symbol for the season. So it really is going to be Sam, Dean, Cass, and Mary versus the middle letters, which I'm kind of excited for that. I don't know how that's going to play out, if it's going to be a Hunters versus middle letters sort of thing by the end of the season. But when I saw the symbol show up during like the title card, I got really excited because I didn't know how they were really going to play it, but... They are going to be the main villains, which I kind of figured last time, but it's flat out the title card symbol, so that has me very excited. So I'm looking forward to what they do this season. Of course, definitely want to know what you guys thought about this premiere, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and I want to know where you guys think this season is headed, what we should expect from our villains, our heroes. Uh, of course, I want to know what you guys think they're going to do with Mary's character now that they've literally brought her back. 33, I think he's mentioned it was 33 years since she died. So, that's a lot they can do. They can do the whole fish out of water thing. They can do, this isn't the, isn't the life I wanted. This isn't the life I wanted for you guys. She might try to convince them to stop, which I kind of doubt. But, I don't know. There's a lot they can do with their character. So, I would love to know uh, where you guys think they're headed with you know, Mary's character now that she's been resurrected. And of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode in general, so please comment below and let me know. And thanks for watching.